Hello, beloved. Have you ever played Follow the Leader? Of course you have. For most of us, it was a long time ago, but we can still remember the basics of the game. There's one leader, and everyone else's job is to follow. To go where they go, to do what they do, to jump how they jump, to act how they act. Simple. Just like our life with Jesus. Or maybe not so much. See, when we were children, we took joy in the act of imitation. We wanted to follow. And, and so the fact that the leader was wearing boots and we only had on sandals and the leader was jumping into mud puddles, that didn't phase us. It was just part of the game. It was fun. It would phase us now, wouldn't it? You know, as Christians, we're called to follow Jesus, no matter where he leads. The disciples did this literally, leaving behind their old lives, leaving their family, their livelihoods, their plans for the future. They dropped it all and followed. But for us, fear, insecurity, feeling ill-prepared, not having a plan, not being comfortable, feeling upset or angry or hurt, not feeling equipped, suited or suited for a task, all that stuff affects whether or not we follow. But the call remains the same, the same for us as it was for the disciples. Follow Jesus. So let's work together through Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62. Verse 57 says, As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. So here to this first person, Jesus' reply is this, is if you would follow me, you will have no place to call your own, no home. Jesus must have sensed something in the person to give this response. And my question for us is, is this a reality for us? How much would we be affected by the fact that following Jesus causes us to lose our home. Would we still follow? How much does comfort dictate our decision? Where do we feel at home? You see, beloved, our God wants us to find our home in Him. Not in possessions, not in power or position or popularity or property. None of those things offer what is in Jesus alone. He is to be our very identity. We are to be His. He is to be our home. Verse 59 says, To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Now there's been some speculation about, on this man, whether or not his father was really dead. He might have been saying, I have to wait for my father to die, and then I will follow you. Whether or not that was the case doesn't really matter. What he was saying was, I have family responsibilities that I need to fulfill, and when those responsibilities are met, then I can follow you. But the call of the master supersedes those things. And today we are constantly struggling to have enough time or energy in the day to, to do what we need to do. And like this man, we wonder, how can I follow Jesus now? I have responsibilities. And see, this is why church attendance so often vacillates because we're busy meeting some other task or duty. And so our obedience to the commands of God to fellowship with him and with his body are forsaken because we have other stuff we feel like we have to do. But listen to Christ's response to this man. Jesus says to him, leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Jesus is so straightforward because he is right. Those other things, even the things we feel like we have to do, must have no dominion over the call to follow Jesus. Proclaiming the gospel, being discipled, knowing and proclaiming the word of God. This is why we were made. We were made to be his. Beloved, he is our first priority and responsibility. Nothing, no matter how urgent, 
even the dictates of family. This man had to bury his father, but nothing supersedes Jesus. But fear not, God will meet our needs. Jesus says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God will meet your needs if you seek him first. And I can testify to the truth of this. And when you follow him, when you seek him first, he will meet your needs. He is faithful. Verse 61 says this. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first let me say farewell to those at my home. Seems like another reasonable request. Like all of these. Seems like a reasonable request. But let's read on. Verse 62. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. So listen to the words of the person here. I will follow you, Lord. So this person recognized Jesus as Lord, and yet they desire to go back and say goodbye. Well, what's wrong with that? We know from scripture that we're called to love, that we're called and enabled by God to love as Jesus loved. We are called and commanded to care for those in our family. And yet Jesus seems to rebuke this request to go and say goodbye. Why? Because yet again, following Christ is about following Christ. It's about not looking to the right or the left. It's about fixing our eyes on Jesus. As we see in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, the author says, Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. But let's pay attention to just those first three words. Looking to Jesus. That phrase looking to in the Greek means to take our gaze away from anything and everything else and look upon one thing. Looking to Jesus. And that's what following is all about. For when we really look upon Jesus, when we fix our eyes on Jesus, we begin to really see him, when we really begin to see him and know him, nothing else can hold our gaze. And we want nothing more but to follow, to be where he is, to follow where he leads. When we turn our eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face, the things of the earth grow strangely dim. And then, we are enabled by him to follow him. And so, beloved, with all our worries, with all our fears, with everything that's going on in the world today, our task as the church remains the same. Our call remains the same. And as we obey that task to follow Jesus, our one primary mission to follow Jesus, to fix our eyes upon him and go where he is where he is calling us to go, to follow his leading. As we obey that one mission, he will accomplish in us all that we have been called to do. As we follow him, he will make us holy. As we follow him, he will make us light and salt and hope and peace for the world. As we follow him, he will make us ambassadors of a new nation, a, a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father. Follow me, Jesus calls, and I will make you fishers of men. Beloved, let's follow the leader. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you now, and we are so grateful for Jesus that you would call us into a relationship with you through Christ. Lord, we are so undeserving, and yet you paid the price to reconcile us to yourself through Christ. Lord, I pray that you will help us to find our identity, our hope, 
find our home in Jesus. Lord, that you would enable us to follow the leader. Help us to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Help us to throw aside everything that hinders. Throw aside the sin that so easily entangles so that we might follow. And Lord, as we follow, Lord, help us to cast our anxieties upon him for he cares for us. Lord, may we not fix our eyes on anything else except Jesus. Not on our circumstance, not on our situation, not on our struggles, not on our sorrows, not on anything besides Christ. And Lord, as we do so, may you enable us to be ambassadors for Christ in a world that so desperately needs him. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.